Hello, this is Dr. Hansen, Carl Hansen. Uh, this is in the uh, second of the series on anti-obesity medications. We're going to cover some oral versions now, some pills, as opposed to the injectables that we had done um, on our previous episode. So let's go into that. There's a lot of different medications that can be used. And first off, I'd like to say that this is not medical advice. Of course, if you're looking to lose weight or lose fat, you consult your physician, your MD or DO, um, and then a possibly dietitian or nutritionist about weight loss and weight loss medications. Um, this is not intended for specific advice with anybody. This is as of May 2023. Some weight loss basics, I'll just touch this again. Eliminate sweetened beverages. Um, don't snack in between meals, or if you do snack, make sure they are healthy choices with very few carbs in it. Uh, portion control. You want to make sure that what you eat is what you can fit basically in the palm of your hand. If you go out to eat, bring Tupperware with you so you can literally know that you're going to take half of it home and you're only going to eat half there, but you're not throwing any away. Timing of eating. Don't eat late at night. The body is probably not well adapted to late night eating. Once you've conquered those, then you can kind of start drilling down and looking at the food types and whether you're more vegetable based or or the fiber based, etc. But anyway, we're going to cover some medications now that are uh, but that are pills that are pills that have been around and some pills that are still here. So here we go. Um, the pills that ain't there no more. Uh, those are pills that were taken off the market because of really significant side effects, mostly cardiac side effects. And the first one is uh, fenfluramine or brand name Pondiment. Uh, that got pulled off for cardiac side effects. It's used in a very niche thing now for certain types of seizures and remarketed as Fintepla, but uh, Pondamin is gone, long gone. And know the name Fenfluramine, because when you look at this next product, you'll see Dexfenfluramine. Now, Dexfenfluramine is simply Fenfluramine with a little chemical modification, and they called it Redux. Um, that stayed on the market for a pretty good little while, and then it got pulled for side effects. Fentramine and fenfluramine. Well, there's fenfluramine again. So, of course, you would imagine that this combo of what's a legitimate problem, uh, product, fentramine, and that the fenfluramine combination made it going to be pulled off the market since fenfluramine was yanked. So, we don't see fenfen anymore, although we see fentramine. Um, as time moved on, we had meridia, sibutramine, and that seemed like, of course, it was going to be great. Of course, it wasn't. It was pulled off the market by the FDA. And the next was Belvique. That was going to be wonderful. Nope, Lorcarserin doesn't do the job, cause side effects, it got pulled. So there's a whole series of ones when you stroll down memory lane of medications that were uh, had to be pulled off the market. And I would bet a lot of y'all who are probably older than 60 years old or let's say 70 years old maybe had a chance to use some of those products and remember some of those names but let's cover a few other items here we're going to cover products that are approved by the fda for weight loss i mentioned before fentramine or adapex fasten that's a uh, product that's been actually really well tolerated it's 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 a controlled substance but uh, we use it for about three months at a time it's pretty good appetite suppressant and it's pretty well tolerated uh, some people can't tolerate it, but um, it's a pretty well tolerated product. The other product that's uh, weight loss on the market is Oralostat. Uh, when it was originally released, it was released as brand name Zenical at the high strength version. Uh, when it went over the counter, it went as Ally, the lower strength version. But Oralostat is actually a medication which prevents your GI tract from absorbing fats and oils. So if you eat a food that has a high fat content, uh, the fat stays in your colon and just comes out. Uh, so it can lead to some disturbing diarrhea-ish, flatulence-ish type of things that may be embarrassing for some. But nevertheless, it's still effective and it's still available. So those are FDA approved specifically for weight loss. Now, there's other oral medications that we use. Um, these are medications that are not for weight loss, but uh, clinicians have found out, hey, when we use these products, people seem to lose a little bit of weight on it. And um, let's go over these. So one is glucophage or metformin. Uh, that product has been around for decades. It's for diabetes and it's specifically for that. And it is just noted that in some people who also took metformin, they lost some weight in addition to the glucose getting better. So we use that. 
Side effects on this, uh, some people have diarrhea with it as a side effect, but it's a really well tolerated product. The next item is uh, an antidepressant, actually, Wellbutrin, bupropion. Uh, kind of because it works at the dopamine uh, level, um, it tends to cause reduced cravings, reduce uh, appetite for certain things. So bupropion is also used to help smoking cessation. Uh, so it's a really well tolerated product. Some people might get a little bit agitated with the use of bupropion, but uh, that's quite a bit unusual, I would say. Uh, the next product is Topamax, Topiramate, originally developed as a seizure medicine, sometimes now used for neuropathy and nerve pain. Um, people found out, hey, it also caused appetite suppression. Topamax side effect, mostly sedation, kind of cloudy feeling, but nevertheless, it actually is an effective product and can be used. The uh, last product in this list would be naltrexone or naloxone. That was used for, and that is used for opioid use disorder and alcohol use disorder. It prevents cravings um, by occupying, occupying certain receptors in the nervous system. So that's also been helpful. Some people can't tolerate it because it wipes them out. Um, the 50 milligram version I show here is essentially, we don't ever use that for weight loss purposes. Uh, we'd use it for much like a fourth or an even eighth of this dose. I mentioned on a previous presentation that uh, there's a, a product called semaglutide made by Nova Nordisk, and there's uh, there's an oral version called Rebelsis uh, that also seems to work. Again, it is a medication for diabetes, but as with a lot of these newer diabetic products, weight loss is an accompanying beneficial effect. So you could um, go off label as a physician and technically use Rebelsis for weight loss. I don't find that a whole bunch, but I certainly know folks who do that. Um, the next product is going to be combination product. These are drugs that are FDA approved for weight loss and are maybe combined with a couple off-label drugs or a combination of two off-label drugs. And let's get into that. The first one is Qsimia. Um, as you can see, it's really it's just a combination of fentramine and topiramate. Fentramine, of course, is FDA approved for weight loss. Topiramate is FDA approved, not for weight loss. But the company that makes Qsimia, they said, well, let's put the two together run a study, and sure enough, it showed that it reduced appetite and also in, um, caused weight loss. So Qsimia is a combo product. The next combo product is called Contrave. That's a combination of bupropion, the antidepressant, and naltrexone, the one for cravings and substance abuse. Neither one of these products, components, is indicated for weight loss. But the company that who did this combined them, put them together, and found out we well, lost weight, they lost decreased appetite. So Contrave was the name of that. Of course, Qsimia and Contrave are going to be somewhat expensive, even though they're actually composed of two generic products. In summary about weight, calorie quantity, that's got to be the big deal. We talked about the four big points earlier. Framing food. Is food for hunger or pleasure? Is it for anxiety? Do we eat nervously? Do we eat it because we're fidgeting? We have to look at really how we look at food. It's for sustenance, not much else. And I think the root of all this, this starvation preservation, the human body from an evolutionary standpoint is really adapted to uh, acquiring calories and holding on to those calories, storing those calories. Because sometimes there's going to be dry episodes that you can't go get calories, you can't go hunting or berry picking. Um, so that's how we're wired. Our neurochemistry, our chemicals are wired to retain calories. They're not wired to voluntarily get rid of calories and decrease our energy stores. That does not confer any evolutionary benefit. So that's why sometimes it's so hard to lose weight. It's just because we ain't wired for that. Other ways to lose weight, we just went over some medications, some various pills that can be very effective with helping people cross that threshold and uh, have their appetite decrease. Um, we also talked about injections. We talked about some bootleg injections uh, in a previous episode about, uh, you know, watch to watch out for of some of these uh, chemicals people are injecting. Um, bariatric surgery is always an option. So if none of these things work and you're morbidly obese and having all kinds of problems, sometimes bariatric surgery is, the, is actually the best way to go. But at least there's a lot of other things we can try before we get into Thank you for listening. I hope this was of some benefit and I hope this was of some interest to you. If you're trying to lose weight, good luck to you. Contact your physician to go over the treatment options. Contact a nutritionist or a, a dietitian for advice if you need that. But anyway, thanks again for listening. I hope this was of some benefit and we will catch you later. All right, bye now.